Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by Adam Nicholas from What Culture. Hell in a Cell 2020 has just finished, and we are here to tell you what went down. And what went down, Adam Nicholas, was two really good Hell in a Cell matches, and then the main event. Randy Orton is your new WWE champion. But Sasha Banks is also SmackDown Women's Champion, and that is one of the biggest takeaways from tonight. A sensational match between Sasha and Bailey. A brilliant match, worthy of all of our attention. If we could just do the whole what went down on that match, that would be great. <laughs> With a little side helping of Roman Reigns and Jey Uso, that is what I'd be up for. But yeah, look, we know it's a WWE pay-per-view. It's not all going to be... Perfect, and I think perfect is a mm-hmm. very, very strong way to go with this. But we got out of the three Hell in a Cell matches, we got two really good ones. So mm. I'm going to take that as a win, I think. And you know, for once, credit where it's due, WWE didn't hoy a whole load of yeah. matches that they didn't need to on this pay per view card. Yeah, there was a couple who didn't need to be on there, really. And you know, you've got <laughs> Retribution getting beaten again in like four minutes, uh, but for the United States Championship. So I guess that's an improvement. But uh, yeah, it was, they just gave all the Hell in a Cell matches plenty of time. Although one of them probably didn't need to go over half an hour after we've already had nearly an hour inside Hell in a Cell already and certainly didn't need to main event. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. I think a lot of people are going to be looking and thinking, why did we not have Bailey and Sasha in the main event of this pay-per-view? Especially when we also had the added wrinkle of a potential cash-in. More on that in just a second, I'm sure. Um, that never actually materialised. So we kind of made an allowance for that. That never happened. Randy Orton is your new WWE champion, as you said. And did that need to be the last visual of the night? I'm not sure it did. But again, glass half full... We got two good Hell in a Cell matches out of three. I think that's, yes. that's pretty good. It, it, it's not made me go, Ooh, I can't wait for Monday Night Raw after no. this. I really can't wait for SmackDown next week, I have to say. Or this yeah. week now, considering what time it is. But anyway, let's start at the beginning. By the way, on the kickoff show, we had R-Truth defending the 24-7 championship against Drew Gulak. It went like five minutes and he out-wrestled Drew Gulak, which is preposterous. Um, pinned him. Job done. There you go. R-Truth retains. Uh, as a chat with Jeff Jarrett on the way out, Andrew Gulak gets angry and shouts, John Cena sucks. So Drew Gulak is set to face John Cena in the main event of Surviving Hard. <laughs> no, um, and he got, R Truth got chased off by Akira Tozawa and a couple of the Lucha House Party because, oh, isn't it funny? Anyway, uh, let's start on the main card. Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, I quit my inside Hell in a Cell opened the show and was given plenty of time with good reason Adam Nicholas absolutely now a lot of people might look at this match and say like well you know it was they weren't sure that so much happened and stuff I know a lot of people kind of differ on this to do like the, the whole storyline but genuinely great stuff this like it it's, continues to be some of WWE's best storytelling at the moment because the guys who are in the match have got so much to draw from and this is no different I think on the last time we did one of these we kind of said that Roman, was, I felt like Roman was still finding his feet a bit mm-hmm. as a heel. And I feel like we're seeing the refining of that now. This feels like a much more finished product of Roman Reigns as a heel. He's just so goddamn believable. And he's so goddamn scary, man. Like, nobody looks like they can stop this man at the moment. And he, he's he got that horrible mean streak in him, hasn't he? Yeah, he hit Jay with like three spears. It developed into a strap match at one point where they're just smashing each other with that. Um, and it was, it, I thought it was fascinating the way that they worked out the finish. Look, I, I know it, that finish to some people is rather divisive. I saw some people saying it was lame and they didn't like that Roman started breaking, but it was, you know, broke down in the ring. I don't know. I, I really, really enjoyed that. And I know you did as yeah. well, Nicholas, but I can understand some people that's, that's not your cup of tea. And I know they weren't a fan of even the first match with all the talking in the ring, but I think it adds an added little layer to this story. And I thought, I was really intrigued because we were speculating sort of as it was going on. We were like, well, look what he's done to Jey Uso. He put Jey Uso's head between a post and some stairs, the steel stairs, and squashed it basically. 
So it's like, I'm not sure Jey Uso can even say I quit or if he will, because he's kind of been put through the ringer at no point has he acknowledged Roman Reigns as the tribal chief. So nope. he is murdering Jey Uso, so much so that the referee goes to call it off and Roman Reigns, hero of the people, says we're not having a bloody no contest in 2020 Hell in a Cell. So hoys the referee out of the ring, door opens, in comes more referees, in comes Adam Pearce, um, and they all... <laughs> sell for the stairs that Roman Reigns eventually chucks back <laughs> into the ring and basically get out of there. And in comes Jimmy to protect his brother. He's berating Roman. He's talking about, you know, the the, the history that they've got together, the family, the, the, the bloodline that they have together. And Roman Reigns, who previously had had the stairs, stairs set over Jay, just, just, just bollocking him, basically, for not saying I quit yet. <laughs> He breaks down. He says he doesn't know who he is anymore. And Jimmy goes, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, we'll get through this. Roman Reigns grabs him and chucks the sodden life out of him. Whoa. I really enjoyed it. I'm a sadistic bastard. And the only way, as, as, as Jimmy is scratching and clawing for his brother to wake up and save him, the only way, way that Roman will break that hold and the only way that Jey Uso will actually acknowledge Roman Reigns as the tribal chief and say I quit is for saving, is via the process of saving his brother. He announces he quits. Roman Reigns is still universal champion. And what a tasty affair we've got on this week's SmackDown. The Usos basically have to kowtow to Roman Reigns now. And Afra and Sika are waiting at the top of the ramp to, to coronate the, the tribal chief. Brilliant stuff, I thought. Oh, wonderful. Honestly, wonderful stuff. I love the consistency. Yeah, like uh, a lot of people saying, oh, the, it's very similar to the previous, you know, finish just switched around. Yeah, of course it was. That's the whole point. What's the key element here Roman Reigns has got rid of all of his sort of love for the bloodline and he's, he's completely cut the tie there whereas Jimmy and Jay represent the two guys who are sticking to that who have respectively quit for one another in two different matches now because that bond is unbreakable between them Roman has just shattered it entirely and now that visual of him getting the full on proper tribal chief uh, layer put around him it was made out of like it looked like it was just it, it, the red and mm. that I guess, in a way, it's sort of like sort of like peppers, but that sort of shape and the whole visual of that going around him, he just looks so goddamn powerful. And Paul Heyman looks the more powerful Roman gets, the more terrified Paul Heyman is. Uh, that was followed by the uh, Elias versus Jeff Hardy match. I, I really want to spend more time talking about some of the other matches on this card. So basically, it was a match straight out of Monday Night Raw, except yeah. for the fact that as they went to the outside, you thought, oh my god. Jeff Hardy's going to do a swanton onto the apron. That's not going to be good. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But they go to the outside. Uh, Elias goes to attack Jeff Hardy with the guitar. Jeff Hardy gets out of the way and attacks him. And then gets the guitar the car and goes, oh, bollocks, I'll just smash it over and move back. So Elias wins via DQ. Will this feud continue? Do I really care? I just want to see more people get hit with guitars, if I'm perfectly honest. But anyway, yeah, Elias defeats Jeff Hardy uh, by disqualification. And we head to the match for the money in the bank contract and what controversy and scandal Adam Nicholas. Well I was getting excited there with Chef Kiss. I was already starting to think about the next Hell in the Cell match but obviously of course let's talk about the controversies that went down in this one. Because for all intents and purposes you know we knew this wasn't going to be a five star classic. It, the, it was more about the stakes not the stakes and weights this time but the actual okay. stakes of the money in the bank contract and can you believe it? They have taken the money in the bank briefcase off of Otis. Is now Mr. Money in the Bank. But we have a twist in the tale because mm -hmm. we all wondered how it might go down. We all probably hoped, I think a lot of people would have hoped, that Otis might have retained because it seems like a feel-good kind of thing. But oh no, a bad day for Otis. Not only does he lose the money in the bank, but he loses it because his best friend and tag team partner, Tucker, has turned on him and betrayed him and smashed him over the head with the Money in the Bank briefcase, handing the win to the Miz. Before this, we'd seen shenanigans. We'd seen um, John Morrison trying to get involved in the match, eventually getting banned from ringside by the referee. So we thought the danger was gone. We thought we were just going to get a match. Otis was doing pretty damn good by himself, had the Miz right where he wanted him, had hit the worm, had done the worm, the caterpillar, all sorts of different stuff here. Yeah. He was flying. 
right up until Tucker decides to turn on him, smashes him over the head with the briefcase. The Miz gets the one, two, three, and Miz is now back in the position of being pretty goddamn dangerous on on the brand with literally a brand new champion to come, as we're going to talk about in just a second. It's all very exciting stuff, but the big takeaway here. Took that betrayed orders, Adam Wilborn. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the promo he cut afterwards, he is kind of justified with what he did, which always makes quite a good heel storyline, I think. What I would say is there's something you voiced uh, in particular regarding, okay, right, Otis versus Tucker, fine, and that gets the briefcase away from Otis, which, you know, I think any permutation in where Otis cashes in was always going to be a bit difficult for, for fans to swallow um, and unless it was some sort of convoluted tag team title shot but anyway the problem is what happens after Otis versus Tucker and, and you saw echoes of many great tag team split ups because of course we can't have tag teams in WWE No we can't have tag teams and Vince always seems to have this fascination with putting people into the position of sinking or swimming like before they're probably ready for it I don't know if Otis and Tucker work as single stars just yet but we don't have a choice now that's the route we're going down this stinks to the high heaven of the splitting of American Alpha into two separate entities as single stars this stinks of Big Cass and Enzo being forced into a feud against one another and ultimately none of them were better off at the end of it because they weren't ready for that singles push Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder need I go on the Bludgeon Brothers, etc. Like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I'm worried already for these two because I think they were a good act together. I really do. And I thought St. Mandy Rose were a good act together. And now we find ourselves in a position where nobody seems to be better off. And isn't that just the tale? And how do they feud? They're on different shows. But anyway, that doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, let's move on and talk about the match of the night and the payoff to a few that you know we've loved this year and so certainly that's down to Michael Hamflet for plotting the points of this and we spoke to him immediately after this match and he couldn't have been happier uh, with 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 the way well they haven't necessarily concluded but the way things went down inside Hell in a Cell between Sasha Banks and Bailey for the Smackdown Women's Championship Sasha Banks as I said earlier is your new champion a brutal conclusion to this match that kind of had everything. It had the kind of creativity that you were expecting from these two. They wanted this to be a lasting match that was going to... It was going to hold up against Sasha versus Becky. It was going to hold up against Sasha, Sasha versus Charlotte. And I think it did just that. Um, I think these two... You know what? It's going to be good because when they're two really good mates, it means they're going to kick the crap out of each other in a match and that is what we got we got some real brutal beating of each other with chairs kendo sticks all sorts of bits and bobs table was in there as well it's like a, a ramp for sasha to run up and do a meteora on the bailey who was against the cage smack it honestly brilliant stuff like sasha must have hit about three or four different variations of the meteora using something as a jumping point and these two just were creating magic in there from the word go weren't they yeah, they made weird little bridges out of kendo sticks to hoy each other into. Yeah, there was a meteor into think I think everything inside Hell and Cell. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. There was that moment where you know there's a bit loads of bits and bobs with chairs and people getting chucked into chairs in the corner and what have you. But there was that bit I remember me and you, probably, I think, kind of got missed. Yeah, we Bailey just went, I just hit, I hit straight into the floor. Yeah, it just looked far more brutal than arguably any other weapon shots. Uh, Bailey had brought down a chair with, I'll be honest, I, I thought it was a dick drawn on it initially, um, which <laughs> speaks a lot about my downstairs mix-up. But he was actually one and oh uh, written on on Bailey's chair, um, and that she lost that before the match started as the cell was being uh, lowered. Sasha drop kicked out of the hand and it slid out of the way. Thankfully, one of the referees just propped it up next to the door, and Bailey just dragged it in halfway through the match. And like you said, just just carnage in there go and watch it if you haven't seen it it is well worth 25 minutes of your time um, and then in the end Bailey looked like she was just well she'd been cracking it over Sasha Banks's back and she looked like she was just gonna you know use that chair as a weapon to, to, to retain her championship to extend her title reign over 370 odd days or whatever it is uh, but in the end Sasha Banks reversed it and got a bank statement with the chair just contorted around Bailey's head 
and you thought, okay, that looks pretty bloody painful. I'd probably tap out there. Well, that wasn't enough for Sasha Banks, who proceeded to stamp on the chair whilst Bailey was trapped in the bank statement. Bailey, no choice but to tap out. Sasha had a moment of like, well, I didn't remember that I had that side of my character to me, but I did. And um, well, it's all worked out all right on the main roster. All it took was five years, as Hamlet pointed out. Just five years of letting the performers actually do what they're really good at, uh, which, you, you know, you, you can trust them. These are two of the best, the very best. I love that stomping on the chair as as well, particularly from Sasha, because it wasn't just there to make it look bad. It was there sensical. Like the part of the chair she was kicking was the part that was going to see so up and hit Bailey in the neck as she was already choking her out. It, the thing about all the little details, even down to that, I know it's not a hugely cryptic attire, but Bailey, all black attire. Sasha, all white attire. Mm-hmm. The perfect mesh. We've had it previously with Jay and Roman as well, who I should point out were in a similar board. And just look, man, that's going to go down as a good match in in their history. It's going to go down as a good match in terms of the four horsewomen. And I, I would, I would actually guess we we sort of said there's a chance that they could potentially get split up, maybe, and then end up having a rematch somewhere around WrestleMania. Yeah. If someone offers you a rematch again though soon, I think you would take it. Yeah, I think I think they could do it again, whether it's in TLC, although how you follow it, I forgot there was even ladder stuff that we haven't even had time to mention, but whether you have it at TLC or maybe, I don't know, blow off at the Royal Rumble or even, I, I did, like you say, I'd be 100% here for them to, to run this one back at WrestleMania. Um, but a, a really well-built, long-term feud I've really enjoyed for these two, so credit where credit's due. But it should have main evented as a result of that. It should have. Yeah, why yeah. they did it. There's arguments to be made that you put... Orton and McIntyre last because they got more stuff to do outside of the cell and bursting through tables and you know but I uh, don't care I think with what Sasha and Bailey did if you'd have had five cell matches before it it still would have been uh, yeah. just the match of the night and the highlight of the evening uh, that was followed by a member of the Hurt Business versus a member of Retribution I would shout but it's like three o'clock in the morning and I won't be doing that um, it was Bobby Lashley who even put his United States Championship on the line against Slapjack and then beat him in like four minutes. Tapped him out. Another submission loss for Retribution. I think their first match on pay-per-view, possibly. Either yes, way, it looks so. dreadful. Then they came in afterwards and you thought, okay, well, they're getting the heat back by beating up Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley fought them all off. <laughs> and then the Hurt <laughs> Business came down. Mustafa Ali came in, crapped his pants, almost swore there, apologise. Um, crapped himself legged it and went oh this isn't over and i went no oh, i think i think the whole stable is to be perfectly honest mate but anyway I think it is buddy <laughs> yeah really hard to sort of take any of this seriously it's tough because like in theory you know you could probably do something quite good with retribution it seems very odd to me that they haven't doubled down on this like they haven't given them any sort of they don't mm. look dangerous at all they look like a bunch of fools like even at the point where, and this is no attack of the performers particularly, obviously they aren't in charge of how they're booked, mm. but they are in charge of their attire. And Dio, Dio Madden turned up. I don't even, can't even remember what his name is in Mace. terms of Mace, there you go. And he had like striped trousers on, like he was the fiend. Like, yeah. I, it, it was it's just a weird choice. Like, uh, the whole thing is not hitting for me at the moment. And it's a shame because there's some talented performers in there who are ultimately going to get tarred with that brush and it might be hard for them to get it off. Poor oh, bloody me, yeah, she hasn't done out yet and she's already done, done for. She's already tarred with the brush, that's the worrying part. Yeah, uh, and you, you, even if you thought, well, at least Ali's been protected by not getting beaten up by the Fiend, he looked like a loser tonight. He looked like, he did look like a loser. Uh, right, let's move on to the main event. WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton tried to sneak attack on Drew McIntyre and failed miserably at the beginning. <laughs> they brawl around ringside and they eventually get into the cell. Drew McIntyre, uh, sorry, Randy Orton takes off his top. Takes a while getting down to his trunks. There was a bit where they just had to focus on Drew McIntyre so Randy Orton could take his trousers off about 10 minutes in. Um, this was the longest match on the card, Adam Nicholas, and it bloody felt like it as well. It did, unfortunately, it did. Uh, it's, it'd be really easy to just be like, oh, this is going to be a rubbish match or this is going to be a long match. I'm always, I'm not totally against long matches. I just I, I just want 
something and more substance in there. But unfortunately, these two just keep delivering the kind of match that everybody expects them to. And I don't mean that in a positive way, sadly. Um, yeah, really confusing this as to why you would want to put this on last. Um, especially if you've you've kind of allowed for a tease of a cash in. Mm. Like people thinking, well, if they're going to do that, that, they must be thinking of ending this big. And a lot of it was just, as you'd imagine, slow, methodical yeah, beating of each other. There was lots of heavy shots to chests and backs. And like, they are powerhouses and they're big and they're tall. And I'm, yes, 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 they are great. I saw that very early on. Give me something different. Like, mix it up a bit. Why not just have a full, full throttle, 10 minute, absolute mad match between mm-hmm. two people? I know Randy Orton has his, has his style, and I'm not against the wrestler having that style. I just think. If you know that that's going to be it, and that's going to be the match, I just, I, it feels like you slammed the brakes on what was otherwise heading towards being a decent show. Like, yes, the matches in between were, aren't going to be like memorable for the rest mm-hmm. of your life, but the quality of those first two cell matches are going to carry it. You know what I mean? And, and they just tried everything. Slammed the brakes on. Yeah, they tried everything. You know, they they did the whole. Oh, he's kicked the ropes fast. He's climbing through it. And then he's hitting elevated DDT, and then. McIntyre's only got kicked out of bloody one, hasn't he? And then let's just have Randy on burst through a table. And then uh, let's have him get out the bolt cutters and then leave and go up to the top of the cell and beckon Drew McIntyre up. Up he goes. And then Randy on's got a bloody lightsaber for some reason. And then Literally. they they climb down. The, you know, they go up just to come down, basically, um, with the footholds and stuff and what have you. And then McIntyre gets knocked off the cell, goes through the table... And Kevin Dunn, with all of his sodding camera cuts, misses the table. And I realise probably why they wanted to miss the table, because there's a bloody massive airbag in it, OK? Yeah. Still a rough bump. It's not as rough, obviously, but it's still falling through a table from about 10 feet up or whatever. Um, and Jordan. Now we, didn't work, we couldn't work out whether it was a blood capsule or he just... You know, bit his bloody lip or whatever. But he's obviously really injured. He was, I mean, selling really well. He was clutching at what I thought was his collarbones. I think his cross that was just a cell rather than an actual problem. Um, in the midst of just, they're taking their sweet bloody time to get back into the cell. I realise he's gone through a table, but come on, lads. We've all got places to be. Uh, they finally <laughs> show footage of him going through a table like 20 times. Uh, and then they're back inside the cell by this point. Oh, uh, McIntyre gets, you know, pulls it out of nowhere, escapes the escapes the RKO, hits a claymore. He's finally back up. He sets up. He takes an age to for wait to, to Randy Orton to get up. And as he goes to hit the claymore, Orton hits the deck. He flies over. He misses misses the claymore completely. He gets up, turns around, straight into an RKO. The three deadliest letters in sports entertainment. One, two, three. Randy Orton wins, and I think it says a lot when you're sat at the end of a paper, you're going, come on, please, Miz, cash in, and it doesn't happen. Um, not, a satisf- not a satisfactory conclusion to the pay-per-view, but at least it wasn't a no contest. <laughs> at least we got a finish this time round, which I'm kind of pleased about, I guess, if that is indeed what we're going to take away from this. Randy Orton holding the WWE Championship as the final closing shot of this pay-per-view is not what I imagine the majority of people would have voted for if you give them the option. And I don't know. I guess it was the... It, look, they're going to want to push Drew and, and, and Randy. I get it. That That's the match they see as being a big deal. Um, I just think 10 minutes less mm. would have been fine. I also think if you've got the chance of a cash in there, it's a weird tease to give to people and then not pull the trigger on. Mm. I don't know. Ultimately... I feel like people will be left feeling a bit disappointed at the end of that pay-per-view. Um, but if you focus on the matches that were good, that's enough there for me to kind of make it. A, I called it a score draw for yes. our for our stream, and I think that's probably about right. We'll take it. Yeah, exactly. I think I think the things that we didn't like on this, I've already forgotten the majority of that main event. If I'm yeah. perfectly honest, whereas the Sasha and Bailey stuff and the Roman and Jay stuff will stay with me for quite some time. And you know, let's give credit where credit's due. Drew's held the title for what over 200 days, I believe, as WWE champion, and you know he's been a, he's been quite the talisman for for, for Monday Night Raw and for WWE, and uh, hope immediately dropped down to the mid card and to never be back and around the title scene because I think he's he's merited it. It's not his fault. It's that type of boring bloody feud that's gone over three pay per views with Randy, yeah. but regardless, 
Randy Orton is champion. Where do we go from here? Well, you have to tune into Monday Night Raw if you can be asked to find <laughs> out. Uh, but either either way, things on the blue brand are very exciting. And we've got Survivor Series next, next and that's Undertaker theme for 30 years, of course. There you go. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think you're right. Score draw, we'll take it. Um, and uh, it's not been as bad the last couple of years. Boring main event, but at least a main event with a finish. So I think we'll take that. Anyway, let us know your thoughts on that and uh, everything we've discussed in the comments section below. Of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Lots to talk about off the back of this. And of course, previews of Monday Night Raw, reviews of Monday Night Raw and well, everything going on this week, including Halloween Havoc in NXT, of course. <laughs> it's not really it's the spooky noise that I was expecting there, but not quite scary on, that. Of... <laughs> Alistair Black's here apparently. Uh, <laughs> there's the thoughts on Twitter at what culture WWE. Well actually yeah, follow both of us. You can follow Adam Nicholas at It's Adam Nicholas. You can also follow Adam Wilborn at Adam Wilborn. <sighs> it's not even that late. It's not even that late, man. Bargain this quid six spooky sounds. Oh, make it stop. <laughs> anyway, this has been Helena Cell. What went down? My thanks to Adam Nicholas. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>